and welcome back to Mindset Monday. I'm Gene Zanetti, your coast-to-coast -coast mindset coach, bringing you the best sports-specific mindset training system anywhere in the world, Winning Mindset. Our topic today is recovering from inner injuries mentally. How do you bounce back mentally from injuries? This is a make it or break it for a lot of athletes. I'm sure you've seen it uh, at the high level and also at local level, right? So high level athletes and also local level. Some athletes get hurt and they're able to bounce back and come back even better than before. Some athletes, an injury, that's it. They're done. They never mentally recover. They can't get that mind right. So it's a critical thing. We always say this, we've seen this with some of our top athletes. One of the best times to start mindset training is when you're injured, when you're out. Why? It makes practical sense when you think about it. You can't do anything else. You might not be able to do your normal weightlifting. You might not be able to do your normal skills and drills, but you can always work on your mindset. And these athletes that do that, they wind up coming back better than before <clears throat> and getting to the next level. So we got to learn how to deal with injuries. Mentally, what's going on upstairs? So first thing is, there's hope. You got to realize there's hope. And what does hope mean? H-O-P-E. Hold on, possibilities exist. And I'll give you another good acronym for hope. You get hope by H-O-P-E. Hearing other people's experiences. It's very true. So one of the exercises we have our athletes do when they're hurt is make a list of other athletes that are similar to them or maybe they have a similar injury to them, or athletes that are si similar to them uh, themselves, who bounced back after getting hurt like they were hurt. So if you have a bad knee, make a list of all the top athletes in your sport, athletes you could relate to, or even sports that you're not in. You know, Make a list of all those people who had a bad knee, they got hurt, and they were able to come back from that. So now what happens is, see, if you only see one example or two examples, you start to think, well, maybe it's just a fluke. But if you could write down 10 20, 30 examples of people with the same injury as you. You might have to do some digging. You might have to do some research. You might have to ask coaches. You might have to ask people, do internet searches. But if you could write down 20 or 30 examples of people with the same injury as you who have come back better, now it's, not, now it's no longer lip service. You've proved it to yourself. You're basically like an, a lawyer using evidence to build a case for why you can come back so make a list of people with a similar injury to you and make that list. And then another thing, like I said, make a list of people who might just be, maybe it's not the same injury, but just other people who might be similar to you um, locally or similar body type. People, in other words, the point is write down people you could relate to. It's okay to write down some people that you can't relate to as much, but also have some people that you can relate to at some level. And that's because then you start to say, hey, it worked for them. It could work for me. Okay, it's not impossible. So the first thing is establishing hope. Next thing, bouncing back from injuries. We have to come to we have to come to the belief mentally for our own sanity, you have to believe that whatever happened to you is the best thing that could have happened. Okay? And we talked about this about with uh, Kyle Dake, four time NCAA champion, world champion. He got hurt, and you could just see his mentality is, uh, one to, so I saw him before the National Wrestling Coaches Convention, and he was going to speak in front of everyone, and I asked him how his leg was. He was hurt at one point, and he said, you know, getting better and better every day. And I said to him, yeah, you just have to believe that whatever happens to you is the best thing that could have happened. And he just said, yep, right? And then we got off the elevator, and I didn't know, you know, I didn't know where he was at with that or what he thought, if he agreed, if he disagreed. Anyway, he gave a speech later in front of all the top college coaches, and he said that he was, he was speaking to me from Winning Mindset, and, and he said that, that basically that articulation, he also said this in Win Magazine, basically that that articulation, uh, me saying that to him, that was exactly what he believed his whole life. So basically, I just put into words what was going on in his mind. Now, look, I'm not trying to say that to hog any kind of credit. How do I learn this information? I learned this information from studying people like Kyle Dake. So I'm just watching him, and I'm saying, wow, he's able to bounce back from injuries. What's going on in his mind? How does he think? What's he saying in his interviews? And then you compare that with the football player who bounces back from an injury, with the baseball player who bounces back from an injury, with the ultimate fighter who bounces back from an injury, and you start to see there's patterns that are going on here. <clears throat> so I might have articulated it, but he was doing it. So whatever happens to you, you have to believe that it's the best thing that could have happened. So what you want to do is you want to make a list of all the reasons why this injury was a positive thing. 
And now you got to do some digging. You got to think. You got to turn on your creative faculties in your mind. Turn the creativity on and start asking yourself why. <clears throat> okay, because now I'm going to take my mindset more serious. I'm going to really finally put in the work that I know I should have been doing on my mindset. I'm going to focus more on my nutrition. I can't stay in as good of shape cardiovascularly, and maybe I can't do the same exercises. Now I'm going to take this opportunity to really focus on my nutrition also. So mentally and nutritionally, I'm going to improve. <clears throat> maybe your legs got hurt, so now you could start training your upper body more. You're going to come back with a stronger upper body. Or maybe, you know, if you hurt your lower body, now I'm going to work on my upper body uh, mobility and stability. Maybe you didn't, maybe you have poor upper body mobility, but you got hurt with your lower body. Now's the perfect time to work on your stretches and your mobility drills in your upper body. Maybe now's the time you're going to really strengthen your neck. Okay, so maybe now you're going to become more of a student of the sport. Maybe you never watched a lot of videos in the past, but now you're going to put more time into watching videos. <clears throat> Technique, strength, flexibility mindset, nutrition. I'm going to prioritize uh, my rest and recovery more now, better than ever before. I'm going to get my life in order. I'm going to get my, I'm going to, spiritually, my faith and morals. I'm going to take that more serious. I'm going to start taking that part of my life more serious. I'm making a commitment to the Lord. So if you're doing that, if you're taking, if you're writing down now, these are all the reasons why this injury is the best thing that could have happened to me. Then you write it out in a paragraph. You actually write it write it out like you're writing an essay. It doesn't have to be long, just like one paragraph. This injury was the best thing that could have happened to me because, and you write it out. And then this way, when you look at it and you write it, and it's in your own handwriting, you could see, yes, I'm going to come back from this. I believe that this is going to happen. So it's repetition. So first you write out in list form why this is the best thing that could have happened to you. And then you write it out in a paragraph form. So you're getting reps, you're getting mental reps, and you're seeing it in your own handwriting. There's something to it. I don't know if there's any research out about this, but I have to believe this is true. I've, I've talked to many people about this, athletes, non-athletes. <clears throat> there's something to it. Something happens in your mind when you're seeing it in your own handwriting, as opposed to just typing it on a computer. So when you type it on a computer, and I'm all about that, it's great to do that, but anyone could have typed it. When you write it down and it's your handwriting, there's something about physically writing it and then seeing your handwriting that I think really makes it stick. So I'd do that, okay? I'd, I'd want all the mental faculties firing on all cylinders. Do it. Write it down. So again, it's having hope and then it's, and it's coming up with reasons why this is the best thing that could have happened to you. Next, you have to have an action plan. Okay, so anytime there's a change in schedule, we talk about this in goal setting. Goal setting week three is developing a very specific, uh, very numeric action plan. So making sure, okay, how, how many times a week am I working on skills and drills? And what exactly am I working on? How many reps? How many days? How many minutes? It's very numerical in action plan. Nutrition plan. What does my nutrition look like? What foods am I avoiding? Writing it down, right? Having a plan. Mindset. How many days a week are you working on your mindset? What aspects of your mindset are you working on? How are you specifically working on them? How many, how much time, how many reps? So an action plan is very specific. What does your rest and recovery look like? What's your strength training look like? What's your flexibility training look like? You know, how many reps, what stretches, what are your, what does your plyometrics look like? How are you building tendon strength? That's like eight different dimensions I just gave you right there. So whenever there's a change in schedule, maybe you go from, um, you know, from the school year into the summer or from the summer back into the school year or from the school year into season and season into out of season. There's a couple schedule changes that if you don't adapt your, your action plan, that's when people tend to drop off. When I was a personal trainer working at a gym, a lot of people would be out of shape. They'd be coming to me asking for help, getting back in shape. And I'd ask them, okay, were you ever on track at any point in time? Oh, sure, they were on track at this point in time for three months, for a year, whatever it was. Okay, what threw you off? Invariably, it was the same thing with everyone. Okay, they would always say, there was a change in my schedule. I started a new job. Something happened. And they failed to create a new action plan. So once you're hurt, that's going to, that's going to, jumble things up a little bit. You're not going to be able to practice the same way you used to. That's in effect a change in schedule. So now whenever there's a change in schedule, you have to update and modify your action plan. So what is your action plan? See, and you have to have it written down. There has to be physical, mental training, all of it. Okay. So then while you're doing this, while you're, while you're out, while you're hurt, you're still finding ways to train. So when you come back mentally, you're also strong to know 
I've done things. Okay. I wasn't just sitting around. I had an action plan. I was going to work on all this. I was improving on all these different areas. I remember, um, wrestled several, several different places in my life and a lot of coaches when we were hurt. Okay. We weren't, we didn't have to come into the practice room. Well, I remember my coach at the university of Pennsylvania, Zeke Jones, world champion, Olympic silver medalist. And for him, if we were hurt, he'd say, you're still part of the team. You got to come in for practice. And what did we do? So my knee was hurt. My LCL was hurt in my right knee. So what did he have me do? I was climbing the ropes up and down, up and down. I was lame dogging it up the steps, you know, where you're on your hands and your, your hands and your feet, so almost like a bear crawl going up the steps. And my right leg was up in the air and I was climbing up the steps like that. He had me on the Airdyne bike where I was pumping the Airdyne with my legs and my, and my right leg was up in the air and I'm pumping it with my right arm, my right leg and my, and my left. And I would do uh, single leg squats. And he said, yeah, just because your right leg's hurt doesn't mean your left leg should go to crap. And he's absolutely right. So it's that kind of thing that's going to give you the confidence that when you come back, you've been improving. You've been getting better. And some research actually supports that if I'm hurting my right arm and I keep training my left arm, there's going to be some cross wiring that goes over. Cross, I don't know the sophisticated term for it. I don't, know, I don't have the science down. But I know that training the left arm will help build strength in the right arm. Um, not sure that's why that's the case. Just, just take my word for it. You can look it up. Uh, make, so making sure you have that action plan. There's things that you're doing on a regular basis. I can't stress that enough. You don't want to just be hurt and then say, okay, well, now I'm not going to do anything physically. That's devastating because physically, number one, the rest of your body starts, it starts losing strength, right? If you, if, if you don't lift weights for a week and a half, you could, you could lose up to 15% of the strength that you built. The hard work you put in for strength, you don't lift for a week and a half, you lose fit, you could lose 15% of your strength. That's a big deal. I think it's a similar thing with stretching if you're not doing it on a regular basis. So you've got to keep up with it. You could get better in other areas. How many times have you seen an athlete, they hurt their lower body, they get real strong upper body afterwards, right? So putting that kind of time in. <clears throat> and next, finally, before you compete, you want to make sure you're running it by a doctor, your athletic trainer, your coaches, your parents, you want to get the opinion of some experts that are around you and several people, okay? Because you never know if you're dealing with someone who's just, if someone wants to just get you out there to compete again and, and risk. You, know, you, want, you want the opinion of a doctor, you want the opinion of a trainer, you want the opinion of your parents, and, and then you sign off on it, okay? If they're all giving you the green light, you're ready to go. <clears throat> and that's important because now you can compete with that kind of confidence to know that Okay, everyone gave me the green light. I did my due diligence, and now I'm ready to compete. I'm ready to snap it on. And then once you snap it on and you step out there, there's always that nagging thought in my head, what if I get hurt again? So I really think you have to, you have to decide that ahead of time. You have to write that out, that when you go out there to compete, again, it's not, it's not saying that you're trying to like get hurt or you're you know, trying to like breathe your last breath out there, but essentially saying to yourself, I don't like if I get hurt again, I get hurt again. Whatever. I'm not going to, if I step out there, I'm not going to be thinking about the injury. So writing it out, I make a decision that when I step out there, I'm not thinking about the injury. And of course the coaches know that too. So, and knowing that there's other athletes who've played through pain. We're not talking about playing through an injury, but playing through some pain, that's going to be part of it. And knowing that you don't have to be 100% to get the job done. So many people are, the feelings are overrated in their mind. Oh, I don't feel 100% today. You're almost never at 100%. I don't know if you can be at 100%. I don't even know if that's possible. Okay, but even if you're not in the 90 percentile, that's why you train so hard. You train as hard as you possibly can, and you live the kind of lifestyle so that even if you're at 40%, you could still get the job done. You could still beat this person on your worst day. That's the idea of the training. Okay, so feelings are overrated. I'm not saying they aren't important. Your emotions and your feelings, they're like a signal. They signal to your body. They signal to your mind that something's going on here. So I'm not saying you don't want to pay attention to it, but don't give too much emphasis into your feelings in your spiritual life, in your sports life, in your studying, whatever it is. Fe feelings and emotions, it's a signal. So you pay attention to it, but then you take what you can and let go what you can. Oh, uh, let, let go what, you know, what isn't as important. Because again, if you're, if, how many times have you been hurt or not hurt? You haven't been at a hundred percent as if that exists. You're in the weight room. I don't feel like lifting weights today. And you hit a record, you hit a PR, right? You hit a personal record. There's probably many times you could probably think of several times that you've competed at your best while you felt like crap. And there's probably other times where you stepped out there, you felt really good and you didn't compete so well. 
So what does that tell you? Feelings are overrated. So don't get too sucked into that. Even if you are a little banged up once it's time to come back, even if you kind of feel it a little bit in your knee or you feel it a little bit in your neck, you're fine. And once you make the decision to go out there, whatever, if, if it breaks, it breaks. Not that I'm saying you're doing anything stupid. Like it might happen where you kind of tweak it mid-match or mid-competition. You might have to get pulled out of the game. You might have to um, default or something like that. <clears throat> if it happens, it happens. But you can't step out there thinking, well, what if this happens? Like if there's a what if in your head, don't get back out there. Work more on your mindset. So as I said before, this is probably the best time that you could be reading the Predator Mindset book. This is the best time to start your individual mindset training if you're hurt. If you're injured, if you're if you're banged up, because now you can't get, you know, it's going to be harder to get better physically in doing the same things you were doing before, but now you have a lot more time to improve mentally. And, and as we work on our mindset, you'll see, we'll be focusing on different areas physically, technically, mentally, emotionally that you could be improving on so that when you come back, you're even better than you were before. Or if, if that's not realistic, coming back better than you were before, you will get to that point. You will surpass that soon after that. Maybe not immediately, but it'll come soon. So keep working on it. Whether it's sports, school, or life, mindset makes the difference. Take care. We'll see you next week.